Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a uh, drop down field and uh, we're going to use a material design uh, library for that. So this uh, drop down uh, menu will kind of be a replacement for an old uh, spinner because uh, old spinner is uh, not that uh, customizable like uh, new uh, exposed uh, drop down menu. So uh, in order to create a drop down menu here uh, first we need to search for a text input layout. So text the input layout and let's just add here uh, on our screen so as you can see inside our text input layout we have a text input uh, edit text and uh, we need to replace this uh, text input edit text with uh, autocomplete text view so let's search here for uh, autocomplete uh, text view and let's uh, add that here inside our text input layout and let's remove this uh, text input edit text so uh, now let's just uh, select this uh, text input uh, layout and let's connect uh, left, right and uh, top constraint. So all constraint uh, margins should be for example uh, 32. Okay, so something like that. And now I'm going to open up this uh, XML code and here for our text input layout we need to add the custom style. So here I'm going to search for uh, X posed uh, drop down menu so here as you can see we have four different styles we have a uh, outline box exposed drop down menu then we have a uh, field box exposed the drop down menu then we have field box uh, dense exposed the drop down menu and outline box dense uh, exposed drop down menu so of course you can uh, choose whatever uh, style you want and uh, for this case i'm going to first select uh, this first one so outline box exposed the uh, drop down menu and now our autocomplete text view will basically get a new look so now as you can see this is how uh, it should look like and uh, now for our autocomplete text view we need to increase this uh, layout width to uh, match the parent and the layout height to match the parent uh, as well okay so it looks uh, very nice and of course we can remove this uh, default uh, autocomplete uh, text view text and we can write here for example uh, maybe english okay so this is just for the example purposes and I'm going to rename this autocomplete text view ID to uh, just uh, autocomplete text view. So let's refactor that. Okay, perfect. And now let me just uh, run the app so I can show you uh, how this uh, exposed uh, drop down menu uh, will uh, look like. And of course, we're going to customize that uh, furthermore. So now, as you can see, it looks uh, very nice. And here, when I click that, uh, as you can see, we have an option to actually uh, type inside this uh, autocomplete text view. But that's not the case because we want to create a drop down menu instead and we don't want to be able to actually write here inside and don't worry uh, we're going to fix that easily by uh, adding just one attribute uh, inside our uh, autocomplete uh, text view so here we need to add the input type to none and now when we run our application uh, we will not be able to uh, type inside this uh, autocomplete text view so as you can see now when i click uh, nothing will happen and now we need to uh, create basically uh, items uh, inside this uh, drop down menu and for that first we need to uh, open up our strings xml and here i'm going to create just a simple uh, string array and here the name should be for example uh, languages okay and here i'm going to add just uh, three items so the first item uh, will be english uh, the second item can be for example uh, german and the third one can be for example chinese all right perfect so now we can close that so uh, instead of uh, just adding that uh, string array to our uh, autocomplete text view or to our uh, text input layout uh, we need to create uh, array adapter so for our array adapter we're going to need to create a new layout resource file so let's uh, add here a uh, drop down item just press ok and here we just need to add the uh, one simple text view so now uh, I'm going to basically uh, remove this uh, constraint layout and just add this uh, simple uh, text view. So here I can remove basically uh, everything and I can just copy this one line of code, then remove this constraint layout. And here I can just import uh, some of those things. Let me just remove those uh, two lines. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, just uh, zoom in and uh, uh, so I'm going to customize this uh, text view a little bit because uh, this uh, text view will basically represent uh, uh, one uh, item inside our uh, drop down menu. Uh, so here I'm going to add for example a uh, padding on uh, all sides to for example 14 dp. Uh, width can be a uh, match parent here so it can look like a row. Okay. Uh, next I'm going to add here a uh, text uh, color to black then a uh, text uh, style to bold. And the text size can be, for example, 16 SP. 
okay so something like that and basically this is how our simple text uh, should look like uh, inside uh, our uh, drop down menu so now we can uh, close that uh, as well and we need to open up our uh, first fragment to actually uh, create uh, array adapter for our uh, drop down menu uh, so here i have already enabled the view binding to my project and inside the on create view i want to create a new variable named uh, languages and here i'm going to get the resource uh, which we have created which is a string array so get uh, string string array and here I'm going to pass r.array.languages then down below I'm going to create another variable named array adapter and here I'm going to call array adapter and inside I need to pass a few parameters so the first one is the actual context the second one is the resource uh, or our layout which we have created so r dot uh, uh, layout dot uh, drop down item and the third parameter is the actual uh, string array resource so let's pass here a languages a variable which we have created uh, earlier and uh, down below i need to call uh, our autocomplete text view to set that uh, adapter so here let's pass our array adapter and now let's uh, run our app to see uh, how will that uh, look like okay so now as you can see uh, when i select this uh, drop down menu uh, we will be able to see those uh, items and as you can see we have uh, three items which we have defined inside our uh, string array and those uh, items have this uh, unique uh, style which we have defined inside our uh, drop down item xml layout file and of course we can select uh, each one of those uh, items okay as you can see it works uh, perfectly fine so uh, of course uh, you can use a different style for this uh, exposed uh, drop down menu so for example uh, in our case we have used this uh, outline box so we can now uh, remove that and uh, let's uh, type here uh, drop uh, down and down below we can select one of those uh, four so we have outline box field box and uh, as you can see field box danced and uh, outline box dance and um, in this case i'm going to select for example this uh, field box uh, drop down menu and of course uh, for this uh, autocomplete uh, text view height i'm going to select uh, wrap content okay so now it looks uh, even better and this is uh, another style of this uh, exposed uh, drop down menu so you can use this uh, field one uh, as well so as you can see it looks uh, something like that and uh, now you might be wondering why this text uh, is actually not centered with our uh, exposed uh, drop down menu well uh, i don't know if it's a bug or something but uh, in order to fix that uh, we will need to add basically a padding to our uh, autocomplete text view and here for example let's just add uh, a padding uh, top to for example let's say 16 uh, dp and uh, padding uh, bottom to 16 dp as well and now as you can see this uh, text will basically be uh, centered with our or expose the drop down menu so now it looks even better uh, so there is uh, only one more thing uh, which i want to show you so uh, it can uh, happen uh, sometimes for example uh, when you have this exposed uh, drop down menu inside for example first fragment and then you navigate to a second fragment and you get back to first fragment and in that case uh, you might not see this uh, exposed uh, drop down menu right here with all those items and in that case you just need to to uh, put uh, those three lines of code uh, inside the on resume uh, function so let's override on resume here and here we're going to add those three lines of code so for example if we don't add those three lines of code inside this uh, on resume uh, let's see uh, what will happen so let's just undo everything and here i'm going to just uh, rerun this uh, activity so now as you can see uh, this drop down menu uh, will show only this uh, English and uh, in order to fix that you just need to basically add those three lines of code inside the on resume function and uh, now when we launch uh, this activity only uh, you will see that we will be able to get uh, all those uh, items. Uh, and uh, finally I want to show you how you can add a custom icon and a label on your uh, exposed uh, drop down menu as well so first I'm going to open up this uh, fragment first uh, layout file and here I'm going to use a different style because uh, personally I like using this uh, outlined uh, version so uh, exposed uh, drop down menu outline box so this one and uh, now I'm going to show you how to add a label to your uh, exposed uh, drop down menu so here on a uh, text input layout we need to add a hint uh, attribute and for example here we can type uh, languages and let's run the app so you can check that out so now as you can see our exposed uh, drop down menu contains this uh, label or a hint uh, it looks uh, even better so finally i'm going to show you how to add uh, icon 
So here on your text input layout we need to add a start icon drawable and here we need to link our icon. So for that I'm going to just add here a simple uh, vector asset and here I'm going to search for a language icon, so this one. Just press OK and let's rename that to a language click next and finish and here let's just uh, add here this uh, new icon and let's run our app and uh, now you have an icon as well so there are more uh, attributes uh, which you can customize inside this uh, text input layout uh, those were just a few so basically uh, that will be all and uh, I have shown you how to add that uh, exposed uh, drop down menu uh, which is a replacement for an old uh, spinner and also I have shown you how to add uh, an array adapter and of course uh, how to uh, change uh, some of its properties like uh, icon hint uh, input type and so on and uh, that will be all so i hope that you have enjoyed this video please like this video if you find it helpful of course and uh, see you next one